G'day and welcome to another MAD Micro RC Mods video. This is Adam from AVA Magnetic Levitation Australia and you may recognize the footage. Um, this is basically what happened before or as I started to do the S1 to S2 video that I recently released. Um, I hope you enjoy what you see on this one. By the way, if you like these videos, what you see in this and the magnetic levitation videos I do, please go to my Patreon page, which I've opened recently, link in the description, make a donation or subscribe. The shows will only get better and more often. Thank you. This one's completely flat dead, which I actually did for a different experiment, which we may segue to right now just for a laugh. Has anyone heard of um, energy return braking? There's some fancy lettering for it. I don't know what it is. But that's where a car, basically electric cars, drive along, use the electric motor, and rather than hit the brakes and stop and lose, waste all that energy they used getting up to speed, it actually sends 90-95% of the energy from braking back into the battery. So when you take off again, you've only lost 5 or 10% of the energy from stopping and going, unlike a conventional petrol car where you basically Ram, use a lot of petrol, it's gone, and then you hit the brakes, friction, heat, energy stops you, and then you take off again, and you've had 100% loss of energy every time you stop the car. Okay, well, here's a little experiment that I've been dying to try. Do Coke can cars have energy return braking? There's big silence there, and I can like hear his chainsaws in the background. Basically, what I'm asking is, can you get the motor to run and put power back into the battery on a coke can car? I ran this one flat to find out and I forgot all about it until now. So let's find out. How do we find out? We have to get another coke can car and run the wheels of the other coke can car on this coke. Here I'll show you. Okay, so for this first test I'm going to use a little red. Now, what we'll do is we'll get this coke can car and we'll turn it off. It's in the off position. They're actually the same frequency, but it won't matter because I'll switch cars soon enough. I need more RPMs on the rear wheels, so I'm going to change to a different car to do that. But for now, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, um, DC motors, a lot of them, when you run the motor, you put power and current into them. But then when you spin the motor, it actually produces power and current back. Wow. Coilless brush motors are very efficient at this, so let's test the theory a little bit. So I've got little red here. I'm pretty sure the red's got a, enough charge in it to do something for us. Now, in order to get the wheels running in the right directions, uh, let's see. Effectively, just do that and hit the throttle. There we go. So, let's turn the light off and see if we can see any of them. Little red's the one at the bottom powering. No, nothing. Let's try the front and see. Get nothing. This little red light's going on and off, nothing from the other car. Okay, so we get the other car and we'll turn the power on. We'll turn little red's power off just to prove. Still no power in this car whatsoever. And then we'll stick them back together again. So now we've got a, a circuit that's actually in function with the power switch on. And we'll see if we get a result. That... A little red on as well. So both cars are on this time, although there's no power in the battery or the white car. There we go. I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait a second, what are we getting? Any lights yet? Nothing. Okay, more RPMs. Is there any power in this one yet? Look. Let's try again. So. Okay, let's get the world record distance setting coke can car out. What frequency are we on with that one? 40. Excellent. So we're on a different frequency, which is already a good start. So we'll put a it's a 600, 600 milliamp hour battery on the back of this one. This is a larger tire diameter, I figure I'm going to get a lot more RPMs to that one, especially as modified too. So, I have to find a 40 controller. It's not rooted. 
Okay. Let's see if we can get this done. So, first things first, we'll turn the car off. Actually, no, we'll leave it on. And then, well, mm, oh, yeah, just merge the two. The advantage of this one is I don't think the headlights work. No. <gasps> Wait, did you see that? Watch this. Ready? Okay. Get are in business. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we get in reverse as well. There you go, it works. So, there is energy going back into the battery. Let's see. Uh, backwards is tricky because of all these bits on the car, but anyway, we'll try. Oh yeah, look at that. A little red lights coming on. And the headlights come on. So, Let's do a voltage check and then we'll try and pump some volts into that car. See what happens next. Okay, I've got our voltmeter here. Let's move this one across. I've got a charging adapter. So I'll plug that into the car. And I should be able to get a voltage reading off the car with it. Alright, well, now we're going to do this because the workshop's in disarray. Probably won't be able to see the numbers very well, but I'll read them out to you anyway. How's that sound? Here we go. Whoa, so we've gone from zero when the car started. It was actually on zero volts, believe it or not. So I should have shown, but there you go. 0.923 volts just from that. Surging it away like I did. All up, it's taken a little bit to get that in there. Can we pump some volts into this thing or what? Let's try. I think what happens is you've got to be over a certain RPM for it to work. That's why the other car didn't work, but this one, definitely doing something. Put our module back in. Retest. What have we got now? 0.927 was the last reading. Point nine five one. So I'll write that down. I think. Sorry. I think what we'll do is we'll push this one to a volt. Let's see if we can get this car to get up to one whole complete volt. Yes, it's a little bit dumb and crazy. Don't really care right now. I think it's exciting and interesting. This is like the world's smallest, one of the cheapest micro RC cars, and it actually has energy return braking. Let's have a look, see what we got. Turn the light back on, we know it's working. So, what meter on. Don't get me wrong, it'd be hard to push this thing all the way up to full voltage because you've got to push amps in with it. 0.967. A little bit to go. Oh, 0.978. I just thought I'd really, really quickly do one more test and just see is there energy going back in or not? Easy way to find out is to plug into the battery charge socket, hook up a voltmeter and run the car basically with another car. So yeah, we're ready to go. So all we have to do is see a change in voltage. Hopefully it's a rise. Um, we should see a jump, we should see it go up a little bit. So I'll just try and do it this way first, it's a bit tricky. Come on. There we go. Okay, so I'll stop, voltage will drop back. I think we got it. And then when we hit it, voltage starts to come up. Okay, so there is energy going back in. It does have energy return braking of sorts. Keep in mind when you're charging um, NICAD type batteries and older style batteries, um, you generally need to put almost twice the voltage back into them to get them to take a charge. So. This isn't a practical way to put amps and volts back into them. I'm spinning it twice as much as I should to do it in the first place. But it just sort of proves the theory or the thought that yes, energy return system is actually in there by accident, if at all. 
Probably does bugger all, if anything, uh, unless you like got the car and pushed it two or three times down a hill the speed that it should go and did it for a really long time, you'd probably wear the thing out before you charged it properly anyway. So, 